How's it going, everybody? Welcome to another daily movie review. Today, we're going to be talking about 1999's The Haunting. The film is directed by Jean de Bont. It is uh, written by David Self, based on a screenplay by Shirley Jackson called The Haunting of Hill House. It stars... Oh, get out of here, piece of paper. It stars Liam Neeson, Catherine Zeta-Jones, Owen Wilson, Lily Taylor, Bruce Dern, Marian, uh, Marion Seldes, and others... The plot synopsis logline here is when Eleanor, Theo, and Luke decide to take part in a sleep study at a huge mansion, they get more than they bargained for when Dr. Marrow tells them of, a, of the house's ghostly past. So yeah, The Haunting. This was a big thing when it came out. Uh, it didn't review very well, but people, like audiences, flocked to this thing. At least that's my, my sense memory of it. Like It did pretty well. And it was kind of a big special effects thing, you know, for especially for like 1999. It was kind of the early days of computer CGI stuff. And there's a lot of that in like kind of the later goings of the movie. But it had been years and years and years since I watched The Haunting. It's probably I think I owned it on VHS when I was a kid because it was just I would just buy shit. I used to go to buy previously viewed movies, at, you know, at Blockbuster, Hollywood Video, whatever. Um, so I probably, I think I owned it and uh, it's been, it'd been years and I'd been meaning to just check it out. For some reason, I just had some sort of curiosity. The haunting of Hill house has kind of come back into the zeitgeist, you know, Netflix has its series, uh, the Mike Flanagan directed series, uh, the haunting of Hill house, which is kind of this modern update of the novel. There's the movie from 1963, um, that this is not a remake of. Uh, because they didn't have the rights to do that, but it's just another adaptation has the same name. Honestly, it actually was supposed to be called The Haunting of Hill House uh, back in 1999, but the there was another remake that came out the same year called The uh, House on Haunt, the, the Haunted House on the Hill. The Hill on what is it called? The House on Haunted Hill. So they didn't want people to be confused. Okay, they didn't want any confusion, so they uh, opted just to go with The Haunting. So what did I think coming back to the sucker? This uh, this movie from 1999, this this ghost house movie, <laughs> this haunted house thrill ride. Uh, I thought it was pretty bad. I think uh, the critics got this one right back in 1999. It is a surprisingly boring movie. Like not a lot happens, and uh, the characters are all awful and also underdeveloped. Uh, Lily Taylor, she's kind of the lead um, as Nell. She gets a little bit more. She gets a little more juice. And I would say even the first like 20 minutes of the movie, I was like, oh, okay, well, maybe this will be interesting. They set some stuff up. There's some interesting character things. There's some sort of uh, the parallels between what she's going to learn about what goes on in that house and her own life. Uh, and then the movie's like, no, we're not going to do anything with it like that. And then we're going to have like this really boring kind of uh, amusement park ride uh, where. But even then, not really, because not a lot happens. And it, it, Jean de Bont, the director, is more of an action director, especially at the time. He's most famously, you know, most famous for like Speed and Twister. Uh, he also directed Speed, too. Um, he hasn't, is he still alive? He hasn't directed a movie since 2003. Lara Croft, Tomb Raider. I think what he does now, yeah, he's a, he's a cinematographer. So he's gone back to his cinematography roots where he started. Um, yeah, so, and he just does not know how to make a haunted house movie. And it has, and you can, you can almost like tell that he's an action movie director because he's, he wants you to go on that kind of a ride, but you can't do it in the same way that you do it with something like Speed, where the, there's the this, this sense of the way that movie escalates, or even Twister, right? It's just not the same tool set. And he cannot, like, create tension to save his life, and he can't, like, the, I think maybe that there was some sort of problem with the CGI or conceptualizing these set pieces that were going to happen. Like, all of it feels very flat, it's, you know, in fairness, it is actually shot okay. It's, I actually, the look of the movie is not awful. Um, Carl Walter Lindelob, 
Although I think maybe he might have quit, though. I don't think I was reading something about this movie. I think he might have quit. But yeah, but very disappointing movie. And apparently the studio, even like kind of the studio knew it was a stinker. Like Steven Spielberg was a spearhead of this thing. Uh, He was a producer. Apparently he was even kind of like involved in it. If you see something with the from DreamWorks, oftentimes Steven Spielberg doing stuff in the background, doing a little like he did with Poltergeist, right? He's a very involved producer. But he was so disappointed with the final product, he demanded that his name be taken off of it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it's that bad, but I mean, maybe it was because he was such a fan of the original movie or the source material that he was just like, we have not, we have done a disservice to the haunting of Hill House. I will not be involved in it in any way. So yeah, it's definitely something that seems like it had a lot of production problems. Um, and and the, just on a script level, or at least, you know, what's represented in the movie, uh, really shallow. And you're talking about like a movie about like child death and murder. And it just none of it ever connects in any interesting way. You know, Lily Taylor ends up becoming like a fucking detective for 45 minutes in the middle of the movie while nothing happens. <laughs> And then they sprinkle all these weird like character traits, like Catherine Zeta Jones characters, like an artist, you know, a bisexual artist. They kind of just throw it out there and then they imply that Lily Taylor might be like a closeted lesbian. And uh, maybe that's, you know, adds to her anxiety and her feeling of alienation and why she doesn't like fit into society. And uh, they do absolutely nothing with it. It's just there for like cheap titillation for a moment. Like, oh, sexy movie 1999 progressive sexy movies and it just it's because you're you, when you're watching it, you're just like why is this here why is it here it's not they didn't do anything with it like if they had done something with it then maybe there was some sort of like possession thing that took place um, and the movie also plays a lot worse especially after uh, the netflix series that mike flanagan did uh, I actually I'm a, I liked that Netflix series. I'm not a big Mike Flanagan fan. I don't I'm not a big fan of his movies, but uh, Haunting of Hill House is pretty solid, and it, it it does a great job modernizing and adapting the original story, um, and does a lot of like interesting things with it. It adds all these layers and all this the subtext and thematic stuff in, in it, like kind of just taking what's already there and using it in uh any unique and interesting way a fresh way if you will this doesn't do that this just has kind of the skeleton of the story um it thinks it's doing some clever stuff it thinks it thinks it's being clever because it does a similar thing that the haunting of hill house does uh, the netflix series where it's like recontextualizing it and and having the story basically play parallel with like these new characters that are also like experiencing something and trying to draw, like I said, parallels between the two um, groups of people. And it just doesn't successfully do it. Uh, Like the characters are so unlikable and also just bland and two dimensional. And when you're supposed to feel empathy or scared for people, you have to care about them. And the movie never even attempts to make the case of why you should feel afraid for them. And then also just like the, the weird lack of tension, the lack of a sense of escalation. Like the movie just, it's a two hour movie and it just kind of plods for like 90 minutes. And then suddenly they just like hit the gas and you're on the roller coaster doing loop de loops and fucking demons and child ghosts looking around and people pleading for help these ghosts pleading for help and whatnot. And you're just like, Whoa, it's like almost discombobulating. Yeah. Not a fan. I would say skip it guys. You don't need to watch 1999's the haunting. You don't need to do it. So don't, I made a mistake. I made a grave error today. I cannot believe I watched. I almost shut it off. Honestly, I was like hour 15 in. I was like, I could just stop here. But I came too far. You know, when you do these things every day, you got to have the material. And I try to watch them. I try to make sure I watch it. You know, part of the fun, rediscovering something. I hadn't seen it in a long time. What do I think of it now? You know how it goes. 
You've been around. Yeah, so I don't know. I just was really bored. That's my big takeaway. I'm like bored and so uninterested. It was like so hard to pay attention. I constantly was like wanted to check out. My brain was screaming at me to just be like, just give it up. Just fucking life is too short, guy. Fucking move on. But we made it through. We got to the end. Okay. Not satisfying. Also, hysterical ending. Lily Taylor becomes, you know, she's a, she's like a caretaker by profession. And she was like taking care of her sick mother. That's how the movie starts. And her sick mother dies. And now she's become this permanent caretaker of these children. Like that's her life calling. And <laughs> she dies and becomes a ghost mom. Weird. <laughs> and then like, you know, and cause two, only two people die in the movie. Cause it's actually a pretty small cast is Liam Neeson, Catherine Zeta Jones, Lily Taylor and Owen Wilson. That's it. Like that's the whole cast. And, uh, two of them are dead. And then when the caretakers come back up, like nobody's acting like there's two dead bodies in there, you know? That's another thing. I know Bruce Dern plays the caretaker. So when the movie starts, like Bruce Dern and Marion uh, Seldes, uh, they're like the caretakers. And they're actors of some of some note. Like you will recognize them, especially Bruce Dern. And uh, they're in the movie for like two minutes. Bruce Dern literally opens a gate and closes the gate twice. That's all he does. That's this whole the whole role. I'm I'm curious if like uh, a lot of this got cut out because apparently in post, you know, Stevie Spiels, Steven Spielberg was like, "Whoa, let's try to save this thing." <laughs> uh, so I, I have a feeling it was cut down to his barest essentials, because um, there was obviously maybe like you know when they shot it, they just were not shooting for the edits or something. And when you have one of these special effects things, you can't. You're kind of locked into a certain thing. I, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck happened, but I, I was just made me laugh that Bruce Dern was cast to do that. <laughs> I hope the paycheck was nice. It must've been a nice paycheck. It was kind of an expensive movie, $80 million movie. It's been $1999 too, but it did well. Like I remember people liked it. Um, I, this was one of the first like DVDs, I think definitely in the grouping. Of when DVD was kind of a new thing. I remember my uncle bought it. And he was like super stoked that he bought The Haunting on DVD. Wild times. People have no taste, guys. People are disgusting. You know? You listen to me. Listen to me. I'm telling you right now. No matter what your uncle thought in 1999. Okay, you skip this one. Move on with your life. It was also... It was it was a summer movie, too. It was like... A, it was marketed as like this blockbuster thing i guess they're like fuck man we gotta double down we spent all this money on this thing let's get it out there in the summer season because clearly you know it should be a, a an october movie but they needed to get those summer bucks okay yeah just seems like a, a just like a misfire just a wild misfire and uh and i guess you know after the one-two punch of of the haunting and uh, Tomb Raider Cradle of Life, Tomb Raider Two, he was put in director jail. He was. They're like, no more guy, you're done. Although you know, I don't really even. You know, it's a weird thing. I'd like to. I should probably re- after Halloween, uh, maybe I'll revisit the Tomb Raider movies. I don't remember hating those, but well, it's been a long time since I've watched them, so they probably are not good. They're probably not good. Twister's okay though. I'm afraid now I'm going to go back and watch Twister, which he also directed, and be like, this is no good, guys. I'll tell you what is good, though. Speed. You know, that's that's a fun movie. Shut up. It's fun. Doesn't make any fucking sense, but it's and it's kind of dumb, but it's fun. Dennis Hopper? Pop quiz hot shot. <laughs> you could watch The Haunting 1999 or Just Go to Bed. What do you do? You go to bed. That's what you do. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to know more about Zoobox, a bunch of links in the description, Facebook, Instagram, my personal Twitter, Dan's Twitter. Also, if you'd like to make a recommendation for one of these daily videos, you go ahead and throw it in the comments. Okay? 
I'll put it on the list. You have the best one ever. Have a great one.